Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's webinar. This is JD. We're going to have a chat with Robert Michael. And uh, just before we get started with that, this is uh, the new website that I'm working with. It's uh, reclaimthelaw.com, and it's going to be a compilation of uh, refinement of all the information that I've covered over the years to try and pick and pull um, the key points, the key information. Uh, the powerful processes and simplify it. Uh, private person became kind of a, a dumping ground of all the research. And so I'm sorting through and trying to organize it. I'll also be inviting on um, people who are also teachers in various practical mood uh, methods that uh, create results for people. I just want to uh, let you know that we're going to have a kind of an open conversation with Robert, and we're going to um, give let him walk through some of the stuff that he, he's doing. Robert is, I've known him for a number of years. We're talking over 10 years now. He's always been very proactive. He's got uh, lots of court experience, lots of the legal system experience, lots of the working in the private experience with uh, trusts and all sorts of things. So he's definitely one of the action takers out there that I have a lot of respect for. So um, we're going to let him talk about some of the stuff he's doing and his new website, which is houseofmarcus.org. We're going to see where it goes tonight. And we're going to also open it up for some questions. Uh, Robert Michael, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to hearing what you have. I have some specific questions for you about what you're doing. So uh, let's hear what you have to say first and uh, give us a little bit of a tour on the website and some of the stuff that you're doing with uh, what you're offering to people. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So as I said, he and I have been friends for a long time. Um, we first connected in a group called the Divine Province back in 2012 and 13. And uh, ever since then, uh, I've had a lot of incredible experiences um, with, you know, the legal system, including my own arrest, um, including discharging my criminal case with my birth certificate and other discharges. Um, helping people, you know, the whole driving without a license thing and or traveling, whatever you want to call it. Um, heck, even with licenses. Uh, so, you know, over the years, I've been constantly chipping away at what is the solution, right? And as you know, there's 8 million processes out there that we've all probably done some or all of them, right? And we're always trying to figure out what is the, what's the answer? What is the true way to really get the system to recognize that we're done we we don't want anything to do with you anymore oh and by the way you took all our stuff so we want to retain our interest in that property because we have a right to you know what is the key for that um so i feel like i've been guided just in my own journey to continue figuring that out just like most of us and what i've come to realize is you know something we all realize right these governments are functioning according to corporate law and 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 military law so i started to to figure out that wait a minute you know this is just everything is presumption everything is presumption and the problem with their presumptions is there's a ton of ambiguity there so when i looked up the definition of ambiguity in the legal sense i was like oh well pff, i mean wow that makes things easy because if I question their uh, methods, uh, procedures, paperwork, anything, and say, wait a minute, it looks on its face to be this, but there's enough extrinsic evidence in the background to show that it's ambiguous. And in a situation where there's ambiguity, I'm the one with the upper hand, because you're the one writing, or at least alleging there's some sort of agreement. So if you state or government, whatever, are alleging there's some sort of agreement, then you got to make clear the ambiguities, okay? Because I can't proceed until I know exactly who I'm dealing with and what I'm looking at. So I stopped, you know, fighting a long time ago, actually, and I started to realize I don't have to fight anything. I just have to ask them to be clear, be clear, be clear, be clear. What is it? But first, I need to establish my own public records. Now, I know in other countries, this isn't so easy. But here in the United States of America, it is a little easier. 
we're able to record stuff down at the county land records. And while some counties out of the 3,500 counties are uh, arrogant and won't let you do it, typically in the metropolitan areas, a lot of the more rural areas, they don't have a problem with recording our, our power of attorney. Now, why power of attorney? Why well, use a power of attorney? Because number one, that is what the land records records. It's one of the documents that's on their website that they record. So I use it as a vehicle, okay, to, to get my other documents onto the record. And I'll go over my other documents in a minute. But the other reason for the power of attorney is because I realized that, wait a minute, everything's a presumption. And we all know about the legal person. So when I'm dealing with these guys in any matter, there's a presumption of the legal person being there and there's a presumption that I've abandoned that so they're gonna take control over it. Well, if I have a power of attorney on the record from the legal person to appointing me, the man, that's gonna be a little hard for them to overcome because they don't have power of attorney. It says clearly in there that I've revoked all assumed, presumed, expressed and implied powers of attorney. So that's one thing. And, you know, of course people have trouble wrapping their head around, well, you know, how can the legal fiction appoint you? It's dead. Look, when in Rome, do as the Romans, right? That argument to me irks the shit out of me because I'm like, why, why are you going to make that argument when these guys recognize it? They do it all the time. So why would they not recognize that you can do it? Because you can. So you wear the hat of the agent of the legal person. You sign on for the legal person. And then on the other side, you then take position as power of attorney under another agency, right? Just wearing different hats. These guys do it all day, every day. Right? You can be, uh, let's take a corporation for an example. You could be the president, the secretary, uh, you know, the, the vice president. You can be all the, the manager, all at the same time, all in one person. So if you can do that there, why can't you do it here? Because the legal person is nothing more than an organization uh, organized to do business. That's all, it's, that's all it is, right? So I started to realize, okay, power of attorney is powerful. And I had clarification on that when we, uh, well, not me, but a friend of mine went into a court and was recording hers and, and the clerk came out and said, oh, I know what you're doing. You're going to need the red pen for that because this is what the judges do, you know? And she goes, I'm going to do this myself soon, All right? This was like two years ago. Now, this was someone that was doing a um, UCC process, but power of attorney was part of that package that she was recording at the land records. So land records are very important because that's where they're claiming that's that's where the new landlord came in. It, it, that's why you need an attorney, right? An attorney attorns for you. He transfers your rights over to the new landlord. So he changes the landlord situation from you being the landlord to them. Now that's here in this country. I don't know about the other countries. You guys have to do your research. Okay. So power of attorney made sense to me in many ways. And then it also made sense that that's where I'm going to attach my status, property, and obligations. Okay. So what I do is I take the power of attorney and I have several documents I attach to it. One is a born again affidavit, which is strictly biblical, all out of the Bible, and everything is, um, uh, you know, versed and, and cited as verses. And then I have another attachment, which is called my declaration of status, property, and obligation. And then I have another one, which is attachment C, and that's my um, affidavit of public ministry. Now, how this works or how we've been doing it, again, everybody's got processes out there, guys, everybody. I, I will never promote a process. I can't stand when somebody says, what's your process? What's the process? Forget the process. This is the procedure that I do. It's forget process, forget fill in the blank. This is procedure. Okay. So my procedure is I'm going to establish this record because a public record now rebuts all the other public records, or it points out deficiencies and ambiguities in other public records. And, you know, if you want to know where I get this stuff from, I've got American jurisprudence over here, the entire set. And believe me, I go in there and I find everything, not just there. I mean, I also research on Investopedia, Cornell Law, um, statutes at large, all the acts of Congress, all that stuff. Okay. And over the years, I've amassed all these tidbits of information like we all have. But the one thing that I recognized, and I'll get back to the documents in a minute. One thing that I recognized was, man, there's a lot of people out there that really have their own interpretation of what they think the law is. 
So it started to dawn on me that I don't want to know your interpretation. I really don't care. I want to know their interpretation because that's how they're going to come at me when I bring something forward. They're going to come at me with their interpretation of it, not mine. They're not going to listen to my interpretation. They don't have any rule to listen to my interpretation. So that's why I started researching case law and seeing how they looked at these things that all these patriots out there are talking about. And most of the time, the patriots are way off and they're completely wrong. And that's I'm not saying that to say that anybody's process or anything is wrong. What I'm saying is there's a lot of stuff on the Internet you have to be careful of because it reads one way, but it's interpreted another. So if your interpretation is put into your documents wrong, well, how do you think they're going to look at it? They're gonna, I don't think so. That's one thing I noticed. The other thing I noticed is horrible legal writing. And I don't care what you say. I know we shouldn't have to write that way, but it behooves you to learn how to write properly in the legal way. And the legal way of writing that all attorneys are taught is called the IRAC method, I-R-A-C, issue, rule, application, conclusion. First, you state the issue. Then you give them a rule as to why you're about to make your uh, analysis, right, or your application, how that rule applies to the situation, and then the conclusion, which is usually to say that the issue is justified, right? So in other words, is there a legal person in existence? What's the rule? Well, you know, you could pull out definitions of a statute. Well, this definition says that, you know, a person is, right? Bam, 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 bam. So therefore, this legal person, right, here's your application, applies, this, this rule applies to this situation, and then conclusion, therefore, I have concluded it's this. And when you write in that fashion, whether you uh, make those four points in one paragraph or eight, they understand that because that's how they're taught. That's why when we hand our stuff in, they go, this is gobbledygook, because they can't understand anything else. So anyway, I pull that together and I write my, my power of attorney. I attach my born again affidavit. Now, why do I use a born again affidavit? Because the Bible says you're born into sin. And people go, oh, I'm not born into sin. That's all hogwash, you know, garbage. Well, yeah, it is because you've been taught the Bible most likely from some preacher or religion. You haven't been taught the Bible for the code book that it actually is, right? Because it is a code book. Forget the religion part. What they're saying is you're born into commerce and until you're born again, not reborn, born again into the spirit, you got no dog in the fight, man. You're just you're just a slave. You're not an heir. You're a beneficiary possibly of an insurance policy called social insurance or social security. But you're not a, you're not an heir because you're not born again. You're not in the spirit. And this is what people are walking around saying, oh, he's awake. She's awake. I'm awake. We're woke. You're right. What they're saying is I'm born again into the spirit. That's how the law looks at it. That's how the Bible looks at it. And to me, the Bible is the superior law of the entire earth. I don't care who you are and what you want to argue. I don't care to argue with anybody on that. I know it from my experience, so that's what I use. That's what House of Marcus and everything is all about. We are about following the Bible because we know that's the ultimate rule book, the ultimate law book, that these guys have built everything off. They're just following the satanic side we're following the, the light side, right? The Jesus side, the God side. That's all. That's all we're doing. So it behooves me to have a born again affidavit where God says, you know, according to the book, right? These are allegedly God's words coming through the prophets and stuff, you know, that I am an heir. Jesus said, you're a co-heir. Okay. But not until the appointed time of the father, will you be born again? Well, what's the appointed time of the father? The appointed time of the father is when I wake up. Fortunately for me, I did that, you know, 14 years ago, just never knew how to put it into writing. So my born again affidavit says, hey, I'm awake now. According to the Bible, this is who I am. And I am no longer in sin because Jesus, quote unquote, saved me from that. He already did all of this. This is all done before me so that I didn't have to do all this. But unfortunately, I was born into sin because you guys created a sin, the economy and money and everything that I had to be born into in order for me to wake up and be born again. Thank you very much. I'm now born again now that I'm born again and I'm not the ends legus. I am going to declare who I am in relation to everything in your civil law system. Okay. 
That is property, status, obligation. Why do I say those three? Because I stumbled across a definition in Black's Law 7 under status that said it's one of the three departments of civil law. And that blew my mind. I've got more legal uh, knowledge out of definitions than probably anything. Because the legal definitions are telling you this is how they operate. This is how they define things. This is how they look at things. So for me, definitions are my number one go-to. I still do it to this day. When I look at a particular topic and I want to express it in my document, the first thing I do is go to that definition so I understand the exact root of what this legal system is defining this as. Then I go from there because now I have a solid base. So when I looked at that and I said, one of three departments of civil law, the other two departments were obligation and property. So a lot of people say, oh, change your status, change your status. But nobody's talking about property and obligation. So what I'm doing in my DOS, I call it, my declaration of status, is I am laying out, first starting with my airship, coming from God and born again, and that's in my affidavit, now coming into here's who I am in relation to uh, my property or the property status and obligation. The status is heir, um, king, right, on the land, if you will, in so many words. It's all laid out, and I cite to the law, to their law and to biblical law. And then I go into uh, property, right? What is the property? The property that you guys created, thank you very much, and held for my benefit or for, for the straw man's benefit, I'm taking the interest in. Thank you very much. I've now got the certificate of interest, the uh, document of title, the birth certificate. Thank you. You guys gave it to me. This is no secret. Like we have this agreement, right? I mean, that's what you did. So here's my title. So I'm taking the interest and I'm going to put that into a trust, whether it's a revocable living trust, a common law, it doesn't matter. OK, what I'm showing them is I'm taking the interest from the organization and putting it into a trust because we don't own anything from that straw man. We don't own the, what people call, oh, the Sesta Key, Sesta Key, right? Which cracks me up when people start talking about Sesta Key because all Sesta Key means is a beneficiary. So let's not get too crazy with, you know, 1666 and all that. It's, that's unnecessary. These people don't understand that. What is necessary is how does a trust work? Is this a trust or is this a bailment? In my opinion, it's a bailment. Everything that comes out of the bailment is put into the trust because no one's there to take the interest and show a certificate of title to take that interest. So that's what I do. Taking the interest, putting it in a trust. Okay take the interest put it in trust then i do the obligation well what's my obligation here right well i'm not uh, obliged to you guys unless there's a contract so we're just going to nullify that right now so i go through and i break down everything right and then i attach my necessary exhibits the first exhibit i want to attach is my affidavit of true and correct copy and uh holder in due course so what i'm saying is affidavit true and correct copy of the certificate and also i'm the holder in due course of any uh you know transactions that take place because i am now the interest holder okay so i'm the interest holder got the certificate of title affidavit holder in due course then i go okay uh certification of trust now here in the united states of america every state has a statute that says all you need to do is provide someone a certification of trust and they have to rely upon it on it as the trust being in existence Okay, period. You don't have to show them the trust at all, just the certification. So that goes into my record. Hey, certification of trust. Now I'm not showing you the trust, but what I'm going to do next is attach my notice of interest so that the world knows and the public knows the interest that I took in the affidavit is now placed into the trust and the trust is now the secured party. I don't need UCC for that. You don't need UCC for that. All you need is a public record to perfect the interest, the, pu the public record of notice of interest, right? That's it. It's all UCC is. UCC is for those that want to play the banking game. Fine. Knock yourselves out. You spend your life doing that. That's a much more cushy slave uh, position to be in. So, hey, that's your thing. It's not mine. I don't do it. I do uh, my own thing because I'm an heir. I'm not just a beneficiary. You know, I'm not just a beneficiary of the insurance policy. I'm also an heir. I own the ship, all of it. 
So I'm not, you know, I'm not taking this inferior position of a, you know, secured party creditor. No, the trust is the secured party. I'm the trustee for that trust. Okay. Not the government trust. I'm the trustee on the secured, on the trust that I created which scares the shit out of them, right? Because that's what they want me to be on their trust. You know, no, sorry, we've already handled that. That's what I'm showing you in these documents, status, property, obligation. You know, my status as a free man, free born American child of God, right? I'm an American. See, the problem for you guys is you, you guys in other countries don't have American citizenship versus federal citizenship, right? U.S. citizenship, American being state uh federal being us so that that's a little you guys have to figure out where that lies for you where they will recognize it because here we we can get it recognized so anyway after my notice of interest i do a notice of adverse claim saying hey i took this instrument or the trust took this instrument and took this uh interest free of any claim we do not know of any claim in existence and anyone making a claim against this is injuring the rights of the holder and the entitlement holder and the holder in due course and the owner of the property. So if you have a claim, including a claim of a sheet, which means the government takes it because you left it abandoned, please notify the trust at this address. Give them an address to notify, right? That all gets recorded, bam, that's all attached. Oh, sorry, and then I do the affidavit of public ministry, which is my attachment C. So I have attachment A, Attachment B is the, uh, let me back up. Attachment A is my affidavit of, or sorry, born again affidavit. Attachment B is my declaration of status, property, and obligation with exhibits. And then my attachment C is my affidavit of public ministry. Now, what that says is, guess what, world? Because I was born again, I became responsible. I took care of the fictional property in the commerce system and took myself out of it, right? I, I came out of it, come out of her, my people, I came out. I put it into a proper uh, holding trust, right? And yes, I'm the trustee, but nonetheless, it's not mine. It's the trust, the trust owns it. And now I have the right to go out into the world and preach the good word to everyone as a public minister and I can minister to the people and I can create private societies wherein I will be the minister and others will be the ministers with me. And that's all established according to the law of nations, which is not law, but it's precepts of, you know, uh, international private law between sovereigns. So everything's done according to the law of nations. So now I'm ready to operate in the world and I have my record, right? So then my second thing after that, if you want steps, first step is I create the, the trust. Second step is I record my all those documents. My third step is now I just give notice. Hey, I'm giving you notice, I'm giving you notice. And here's the problem for them. And this is how I create my notices. Hey, first thing we need to look at, got your Dun & Bradstreet profile. I don't even need the credit report. I just get the profile. It says right here, doing business as state of. Well, if you're doing business as the state of, then clearly you're not operating under Article 4, Section 4 of our Constitution, which is a guaranteed Republican form of government. So, and that's not a problem either. I don't, I don't care which way you're operating. I just need you to clarify. Because if you're operating one way or the other and you don't have what you need to prove to me or certify that you're operating that way, you're operating outside your authority, ultra virus, and you're damaging and injuring me. Not a problem. I will process any claim you have provided you certify who you are. Once that's done, because it's in my favor, because you're assuming we have some sort of agreement here, and it's in my favor for you to clarify that ambiguity. And if you don't, it's still in my favor. Now I'm going to notice you. Here's what's going to go down. Please tender this to your attorneys. So I treat them just like they're a corporation. Hey, please tender this to your attorneys, your bond company, anyone that's a surety for you, your principals, agents, so on and so forth. If you choose by your own free will not to tender this to someone that knows what I'm talking about, you accept full personal criminal or personal civil criminal liability and commercial, right? So personal, criminal, civil, commercial liability, okay, period. You guys accept that according to this agreement after so many days of not clarifying for me. Right. And I don't give a shit if they respond or not, because I put that in there in my notice of liability. 
Then I go and I start laying out the, the different ambiguous things about their operation, whether it's in documents, their conduct, uh, websites, seals, it doesn't matter. I just say, look, I'm not saying that this doesn't exist. I'm not saying that you guys are illegal, unlawful, outside your authority. Yet, what I'm asking you to do is certify one way or the other so I know who I'm dealing with and I know how to process your claim, period, over and over. I repeat that, bam, bam, bam. Then I hit him with a notice of liability. If you don't do this, you agree to bind yourselves, the principals, agents, blah, 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 criminally, personally, civilly, commercially, uh, by this, you know, by you either sending me some statutory authority that clearly doesn't apply to me, or by not responding, you, that is our agreement. We now have an agreement, right? This is just administrative process stuff. It's not, you know, rocket science, but it's what I put in there that I feel is what makes them drop shit, right? Because they're like, uh oh, yeah, I've got your Dun & Bradstreet uh, profile, Exhibit A. And what I do is I circle all the pertinent information, right? I circle uh, doing business as. I circle in red, uh, you know, uh, Dun & Bradstreet has, um, you know, these, uh, I forget what they say, but Dun & Bradstreet registers private businesses. Bam, underline that. How many sales you guys have each year? Bam, I circle that. Customers, circle that. I'm circling everything showing, guys, you got to clarify because the only thing I know you as is a business. And when government does business with its people, it steps down from its level of sovereignty to be on par with private corporations, which can sue and be sued. And now you get into racketeering as an enterprise. So I lay this out and I hit them with a hey, notice of intent to contract. Notice of intent to contract. It appears you guys uh, intend to contract with me. Great, not a problem. Uh, if that's the case, here's my terms. And actually, uh, here, if you want to contract with me, I will gladly contract with you. You guys lay out your terms and conditions so I can see it. If you don't lay them out and you're assuming there's some kind of agreement, here's my fee schedule. Okay, now, why has this stuff failed in the past, in my opinion? Because it's not set up right. It's not showing them that, hey, you have a duty to clarify these things. Not because I'm saying you're illegal or unlawful or not functioning according to common law or equity or, no, I'm just saying, I can't, I don't know how to deal with you. So until you prove all these things, this is how we're gonna interact and here's my contract. OK, so I go through all that um, and I got a bunch of other stuff that I put in there. And that's basically how I operate. And I mean, most of the time, these guys in just about every situation have run for the door and said, oh, we're not bothering you anymore. You know, so, again, it's all about tying this into the corporate structure and doing corporate law. It's just corporate law. You know, let's not get all crazy with it now. Of course, there's people out there that want to, you know, uh, use the straw man to do this and do that and do the other. And that's all well and good. I feel that once my interest is, is squared away and everything, yeah, of course I can use it. It's just another business entity. And the interest is now in the in the uh, trust. So I don't worry about not driving without a license and all that stuff. And I experimented last year with that, having a license and getting pulled over and just simply telling the cop, huh? I'm not giving you any information. I have a right to remain silent to what I'm doing without counsel. I don't have counsel. And I just kept repeating that over and over. I, look, I know you guys don't understand. It's not my problem. I wasn't trying to get rid of the cop, okay, pulling me over and get rid of a traffic ticket. I was attempting and still doing it, expanding this case, letting them fall into the next hole, the next hole, the next hole by asking them questions. Is this tied to my social security? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, perfect. Now we've got some federal violations going on. Let's keep going, guys. You failed at due process completely. Uh, that's And it's all recorded. So you guys clearly failed at that. I'm going to let you keep going. Oh, now you're keeping me 48 hours in a jail cell. That's going to be a nice bill. Uh, you told me everything's tied to social security. Clearly there's something else going on. I got your Dun & Bradstreet report. I don't know who the hell you think you are, but this is how you're acting. So I'm building this to make it a bigger case. And don't you know, they didn't schedule my quote unquote trial. This is for a simple traffic stop, okay, where they're now trying to hold me criminally liable for obstructing an officer in the course of his official duties, a misdemeanor, okay, very simple stuff. 
and they're now scheduling, they scheduled my trial for 355 days after the arraignment, quote unquote, right? And of course, when I went into court, I signed everything without prejudice, you know, VC under threat and duress. So I, yeah, I covered my bases. I showed my intention. Yeah, I showed up. Of course I showed up. They got me on bond. What am I going to do, right? But again, even at the bond, I'm not signing that. They signed it for me, right? I'm not pleading. They pled for me. Great. This is all freaking fantastic evidence for when I come to sue you through the federal court because I'm just letting this go, right? So now they um let's say schedule this out for 355 days which is my pre-trial conference is next week so this is hilarious because i looked at their statutes and right in their statute it says if you don't bring the defendant to trial within 180 days it's discharged so again they're outside of their corporate authority right and i'm just laughing about all this shit. and so is my my best friend who's an attorney of 25 years we're just cracking up we're like dude we're just letting them step right into it and let me expand on that a minute you know we all of us that are waking up know oh you can't deal with attorneys you can't deal with attorneys and granted i agree with you okay and you can't have an attorney represent you I, I agree with that however i will appoint an attorney for the estate if i have to because i'm not the defendant right so anyway i didn't do that that's not what i did this is in a different state and he's not quote unquote licensed. Now, granted, my this is my best friend, okay? This guy is wide awake. He knows all about the license and it's not a license and it's a bar card and he works for the crown and he gets it. He's like, dude, I, I get it, right? But trust me, there's no secret stuff going on with these attorneys behind the veil unless they're like Masons and stuff, which he is not, okay? And not all of them are. A lot of these guys are just completely ignorant and have huge egos. Well, he doesn't, thank God. And what he has brought, and the beautiful thing about this guy is he's been a Christian for 42 years studying the Bible inside and out. He's freaking phenomenal and he's a bulldog in court. And he has always represented his clients on the notion that I'm here to protect them. That's, I work for them. He's not the, he's not like the 100,000 attorneys out there, you know, or 100 million. He's nothing like them. So the beauty of it is, is he and I attack this from both points of view, from the private side and the public side, because his writing and legal writing and my private side writing together is ridiculous. I mean, it's ridiculous. So we're just, playing with this case and we're watching these guys and what they're stumbling into. So all that being said, we created, I created along with him and some other people, we, I should say, or I did say, the House of Marcus Fellowship was created out of the Unity of Divine Creation Church, okay, ministry. It's a church is what it is. So we created the church back in 2018. All right. Now, why did I create a church? Because here in the United States of America, a church, it's integrated auxiliaries and it's associations of churches, uh, associations and conventions of churches are uh, accepted from filing for 501c3 nonprofit status. OK, they're accepted for apl for applying. Now, many people run around and say, I got a 508. They can't touch me. I got a 508. They can't. Anybody that says you're going to do this paperwork and they can't touch you, I would run as fast as you can the other way okay because they don't know shit anybody could touch you for anything legal it doesn't matter so but what i realized was wait a minute the only thing that they leave alone in terms of an organization is the church when it's not registered when it hasn't filed and it says clearly right in uh section 508 churches integrated auxiliaries conventions and associations of churches now that's just a statute saying that a church doesn't have to apply for 501c3 nonprofit status because it doesn't. All these churches that are signing up for that are satanic churches. Why do I say satanic? Because commerce is Satan. That is what is modern Satan. It's, it's commerce, okay? So they're signed up for that by signing up with the Fed. The other statute that protects a 508 is 26 USC 6033 which says a church, its integrated auxiliaries, associations and conventions of churches are not required to file information returns. So we set the church up, 
right? Not to do business, but because I am a man of God. I am here to preach the word, the gospel, the truth. And I am not a theologian or a Bible master. I just know that what I do is fits the two rules that Jesus laid down as the only two commandments we really need to know are love each other as we would love ourselves and love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, right? Now, Jude brings in the expertise, my my best friend and, and partner in all this, the attorney brings in uh, the expertise in the biblical translation because he doesn't translate it from the point of your typical Christian pastor who's just spewing out a bunch of shit that he was taught over the years. He translated it because he's been reading it and studying it his own and interpreting it himself. And I'll be damned if he has not cracked the code that's inside that thing. It's amazing the way he does. And you should watch our sermons if you want to know. Our sermons are on divinecreation.org. And uh, there's five of them. We're going to be putting them on the House of Marcus here shortly as well. So, but they're all recorded. They're on divinecreation.org. You can go there, go to the uh, events tab, and under events, there's the sermons, and they're they're fantastic, man. He does an excellent job. So, anyway, with that said, we said, okay, great. Now we know that what we have is unique. I'm not particularly interested in teaching people how to fill out a document and run out there and think that they're not going to be touched and they have access to their accounts and, you know, they can be secured party creditors and nobody can touch me and I can drive without a license. I can travel. I can do all these great patriot things. No, we don't do that, man. Sorry. That's not our thing. Can you do those things? Of course, I believe you could do those things if you know how to do it. Will my paper do that for you? No. You know, will it help you get there? I believe so. That's how I operate. But I'm never going to tell you that my paper is going to do anything for you. Okay, we don't do that. All right, this is about you learning. So House of Marcus provides the structure that we use, the paper that we use, the education that we use. I don't care what anybody else does. I'm not in I'm not out there in the world to promote what everybody else does and throw a bunch of shit in the mix and, you know, have a shit soup. That's hopefully something in it's going to work. Everything we're doing is very calculated, very well thought out between Jude and I. You know, uh, it's, it's planned. We know where we're going. We have goals that we reach in, in the legal world that we are reaching. Uh, we won't give those out. To the public we won't teach people in the public we won't put this on youtube sorry not happening that's why the house of marcus is there you become part of my house marcus is uh it comes from my family lineage okay so marcus uh, saint mark the lion with the wings saint mark also happens to be my um my ast 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 one more time astrological sign okay leo virgo cusp okay i get the lion in the wings the angel wings so that's why we use the lion house of marcus is my lineage of saint mark my uh you know even my astrological stuff ties in that's all my spiritual stuff right so call it branding if you will when you come to my house i expect you to have respect for me I expect you to respect my house because what I'm going to do for you is give you the utmost love and attention and, and protection in my house as long as you respect my house. If you don't respect my house, there's the door, right? Period. So what we've done is we've set up a community that says, look, treat each other the way you want to be treated because I'm treating you that way. Until you cross the line, then sorry, you, you know where we stand. So. What does that mean? That means that the House of Marcus has an NDA, okay, non-disclosure agreement. So um, what that means is someone coming to the website is not going to get very far, okay? So if they come to the website, they're going to go, oh, members, you know, let me see the document library. Sorry, can't get there, all right? It's going to bring you to the how to join page where you go through each of these links. OK, now, if you go through the first three links, you become a user, which means you don't get access to everything. You only have access to certain pieces. OK, so what is the agree, agree to terms and conditions? That's our NDA. And it is very enforceable. All right. Jude and I wrote it. It's an enforceable NDA. For those of you that think you're going to come in and put some fictitious name in there and it's going to save you, it's not. Not if we decide to enforce it. And what we're saying there is do respect us. 
don't take our stuff and throw it all over the internet. We don't want it out there. We know we're different than everyone else and we don't want our stuff out there because that's protecting what we're building. You're protecting the house. And then the house is gonna grow into something bigger. I'm not gonna get into too much of that right now, okay? It's all behind the veil, all behind the wall, just like these guys do. These aren't secret societies. These are private organizations. They just call them secret so you think they're bad. They're not bad, they're good things that just have bad people in them for bad purposes, right? But a, a private organization and a private society is super powerful. That's why they use them. So we're just doing what they do, only doing it for the right reasons. So a user can come in and sign the uh, terms and conditions and get very limited access, or they can go through and become a member, uh, which has a membership agreement, which again is binding, and they can uh, set up their monthly donation and you're a member okay we ask for a monthly donation we don't ask for anything else other than donations for document templates that you get all the files okay if i redo the document and i create a new version you get that for free we don't gouge people for money we're not setting up a three-tier system here you know where you pay for that's not us what we're doing is creating a community a very well organized community our back end documents that you guys don't see are what supports this community. They're very well thought out. They're very well put together. Okay. Our um, articles of association, our church formation documents uh, and how it functions, our bylaws for when we expand. So we know who's in what position and who has what authority to do what. Okay. And also our trust. And I'll explain that model to you in a minute because I know a lot of people want to know about PMAs and things like that. So we'll touch on why we don't do a PMA. Not that anybody should or shouldn't, we don't. Um, so this is how we operate. So when you become a member, first off, you can read about the fellowship. I mean, if you're, you know, just a, just a visitor, you know, the website is pretty simple. Um, okay you can uh, become a member is where that'll also bring you to the how to join page okay you can breeze through here um there's some articles that will probably be um available to you as a user okay this explains about what you know we believe in education uh the organization okay um we talk about pmas even though we really don't promote them some of this has the verbiage has to be updated which it will be here shortly um talk about the community okay news there's news some you'll have some art update to some or uh, access to some of the articles you'll be able to see them but if you're not a member you probably won't be able to view them okay this is usually me writing articles or you know some of our other people okay and the articles are usually updates or events or uh information we feel is important to to give to our people you can see some of the stuff here okay um we also have our events this is where our events are scheduled you know you want to come to a live seminar that i that i'll be doing or you know a webinar you're going to come here you're going to go through the process okay of registering you're going to register oops registration got to sign the first three steps you got to have an nda to register right so everything is locked down big time because in my experience dealing with groups that try to actually set something up that will last way into the future not just give people some documents and tell them how to serve themselves has fallen and been taken down because they didn't have these protections in place this is private any agent trying to come in here is going to have to sign all this documentation to get access. Therefore, if they try to use that against us, we have an agreement. Sorry, you agreed not to, not to make this uh, public to any third parties. And now you're trying to put it into a court case. Uh, I think you screwed up. We have a community forum, which again, you can't get to unless you log in, okay? But the community forum, has a ton of topics okay tons of stuff which i'm not going to get too far into because we uh you know it's it's of course uh, private so the community forum is where everybody's talking you know gathering talking about different things we try to discourage people bringing in a bunch of wacky processes out there or any processes other than what we're doing 
We're not saying they're bad. We're not saying we know it all. What we're saying is we have a very specific way of functioning and we want our members to be in unison because we have a bigger plan that involves all of our members that are following the same exact steps and not going out there and doing all this crazy shit with stamps and thumbprints and things that you know people think make a difference, which really doesn't, okay, from my experience. So that's why we have this thing locked down and why we are moving in incremental steps that aren't even finished yet. And we're not in a rush. We don't care about your legal problems. Okay. So when people come in, oh, I'm on fire. I need to handle a traffic ticket tomorrow. We don't care. Here's our procedure. This is what we do. Okay. And we teach you how we would handle that. But we're not pressed to get something for you by your court date. So don't come here thinking that's what you're getting because that's not what we do. Patience, persistence, continuity, um, you know, being uh, responsible for everything that you do is what we do here at the House of Marcus. That's why we have a membership. And for $33 a month, I mean, I think we provide a shit ton of information, video library, document library, community, my own document templates if people want to use them. We'll be putting our notices as templates, our, our whole entire procedure, and we teach people this is how it's working for us. We've got people in the community forum using this stuff and discharging millions of dollars in debt just with a birth certificate. Okay, so you know if you want to get into that part of it yeah that's available too but we're not doing it any way that you've probably heard on the internet we may have pieces of how those certain things are done because yes they're all part of it when i started this journey i was looking for what everybody else is looking for what's that golden goose but there isn't one it is a it is look two let's go back even further five thousand years of this is not going to be unwound in a simple document okay a simple document may get you so far but is that going to help you create a new society and a new world no that's not going to do that in order to do that we have to apply everything every aspect commercial equitable common law corporate law um i mean name it family law all of it it's all got to be incorporated and I have been seeing this in a stripped down version of, oh, wait a minute, there's civil law and there's criminal law, right? Now, we can argue that criminal law is civil at this point, okay? Most of the courts in the common law countries, if you will, have blended common law and equity into one form of action, the civil action. Great you guys are saying it's all civil property status obligation under that umbrella or in that mix is common law which is simply case law that's all they look at common law as is case law and then equity okay which of course handles anything common law can handle i've done my equity okay and i'm functioning according to if you will god's law forget common law I, actually i'm not a big common law fan anymore uh, only because I know that, you know, the Pope said, nope, no one void. You can't go in with a sword and hold it to the king's throat and tell him he's under an obligation to follow your law. So to me, the whole common law thing is yet another distraction, but I digress. So I focus on what this system recognizes, okay? And I build everything out based on that, and I throw all of it, I pull all of it together, depending on the situation, into my writings and i lay it out for them you know i footnote everything i lay it out hey this is how we're operating folks you know now is that going to stop me from being arrested probably not uh will we get to that point probably we're working on it and we've got some very big things cooking that i'm not going to put out there in the public um it's all behind the membership wall and uh yeah i do think we will reach a point one day where we have our diplomatic immunity and our account um you know uh our, our full accounting and we know how we're getting there too uh and it's showing day by day but again patience persistence continuity right that's how we hey, get Ron. there yep you want to take a breath <laughs> no <laughs> i just want to go real quick if you all want to all right. see the church website 
divinecreation.org. Okay, so you can go there, you can visit. It's set up just like the other one, so you can hit the news, the events is where you'll find the sermons, things like that. And then we'll talk about the organizations. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so it's, uh, I got a question for you. Is it coffee or Red Bull year? <laughs> Man, I Man, tell I'm you. I'm like this all the time, brother. <laughs> it's My like, seminars are literally nine hours of me speaking. <laughs> one day. <laughs> uh, I, I know much, if not most, of the topics and, and, and little bits and pieces that you've covered, but it's, it's still a fire hose even for me. I can't imagine some, someone on here that uh, is relatively new to this. And um, uh, I know you have a background in each one of those things and have researched and actually implemented all of those things. So I, I know you speak from uh, experience and having tested and failed and learned from the failures and tested and succeeded and, succeeded and learned from that as well. Uh, the fact that you're working uh, to the system uh, I like because I've also recognized from my own experiences that they do follow the rules when you call them on it because generally speaking they're not following the rules until you call them on it so right. uh, you have to understand their process and the way they're working in order to call them on it and hold them to it and then they do the right thing because you've called them on it so i definitely definitely get that and the aspect of bringing in um, biblical stuff again i've seen that work um the um integrated auxiliary unity of divine creation ministry concept that was relatively new to me i did some research on it because there was another organization that i saw it with and then i saw it with yours and i go okay the both both organizations have people behind them with good background so i did some research and it's it really goes to the whole uh completely separate jurisdiction of the uh, spiritual religious organizations from the civil state. And mm -hmm. the whole aspect of a society, which society do you want to be a part of? Well, you're leaving yep. the governmental private society and you're moving into a, a separate society that's spiritually based. So it, it, like it all fits, fits really well. And with regards to that, one of the questions that came in was, does the education and the processes that you cover apply in Canada or other countries? I would expect so because the entire world is basically structured this way, right? Yeah, totally, man. And that's the thing that, that that's hard, though, because people want to look at the documents as cookie cutter. And I'm like, well, you know, I really don't have the time to research the other intricacies that I'm going to refer to in the in your law system. But like J.D. said that the entire structure is the same. You just have to go through and find, oh, well, where in our, where can I cite to our legal structure so that they know what I'm talking about? Now, on that note, for you guys in Canada, you're probably one step ahead. And I say that because a friend of mine over at Sovereign by Design and her team has been pulling the documents apart and finding all of the stuff in Canada to relate it and rework them. So, you know, they're going to be, uh, presenting me that shortly so we can review it and go over it um, but the education yes I mean if you look at it like JD said it's all you know um, you know it's all relative it really is yeah and it ultimately for me and what I've always tried to do in my own uh, material that I that I teach is is principle based as long as you're yes. identifying the print prevent principles and then deriving your understanding from those principles, uh, you're going to be on the right path. So, yep. uh, yeah. So cool. Principles of law are so, so incredibly important. And I'm glad you said that because that's been a majority of how I study, right? Remember I said, I start with definitions and I look at the principles of law and then build my research and stuff off of that. Because I see so many people that are out there throwing all this stuff around, but they don't even understand the legal principles or the the law principles or the, you know, the definitions of things. And it's like, ah, oh, man, that's why you're beating your head against the wall. You really are. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I would I would say, yep, that a lot of this stuff is absolutely well, not a lot. I mean, it's all relative. You just got to find where it differs in your country. Now, one thing that I've personally noticed and observed as I've been sitting back watching what 
you know, has been happening in, in the world and in North America with regards to the mask mandates and the vaccine scam and all that sort of stuff. There's a whole ton of brand new people who have just decided that the law is important. <laughs> and right. they're, just, they're just starting to go, hey, that's not right. What about my rights? I mean, like it never occurred to them before until all their rights were taken away. So, <laughs> so you're, you're, I mean, you gave a really intense, high-level um, overview yeah. of your processes and your paperwork, which are covered in your training. I've gone through your website. I've seen the paperwork. Uh, all those documents that you talked about are there. So it's not like people have to write them themselves. They have the guiding documents there. Um, how how do you like? I'm struggling with this because the more you and I've always tried to do this is the is as I learn I try and simplify a so I can understand it and b so I can teach somebody else a simpler way of of thinking about it or understanding it than I had to go through to figure it out. So what you covered so far sounds fairly complex, especially to a newer person, um, but Literally, it's years and years of research uh, being broken down into the simplest steps. I get that, yet it's still complex for somebody new. So right. how, would you, how would you address uh, somebody who's new? Do you have, do you have uh, processes for that, so bringing people up to speed with it who don't have a background? Well, um, uh... I did, by the way, real quick, I definitely want to talk about the, um, you know, the, the model we set up with the church, the UA and the trust, so we can get to that. But yes, it is very complex. So the lessons that I have, I mean, they're literally, you know, a handful of paragraphs and a two minute video. And within the lesson are tons of definitions you can click on and stuff, right? So there's that. And I'm also starting to do uh, short videos. We have short videos and long videos where I'm breaking these things down from beginners that are asking me questions, right? So it's coming because yes, I, I that's, you know, uh, JD, that by knowing me that that's one of the things I've struggled with the most is trying to break this down to someone that's a beginner because I'm like, you know, so on this other planet. And um, so now I figure, well, the best thing to do is have the beginners interview me, let them ask the questions so we're starting to build that out it's called our quick bites and it's in our video library you can just search quick bites and you know the, the short videos will come up there's other long videos in there you could watch but yeah we are we are uh starting to focus on that because our team in the background our volunteer team is keeps bringing that to my attention you know they need to know too and the thing for me is I'm trying to unwind this massive, complex, you know, 2,000, 5,000 year old beast. So I'm not even comfortable with a process, if you will. And I'm just now starting to get to the point where I'm like, okay, this is our procedure. I'm not even going to call it a process. Now I can feel a little more comfortable in breaking down the simplicity, like you said, you know, the very basic points. For a beginner, the first thing that I would say is you must, must, must understand the legal person concept. Would you agree with that, JD, and all the years you've been doing this stuff? Absolutely. It's one of the starting points. You have to understand the separation between what, what we believe is happening and what is happening, being done to us through the civil system. Yeah. Yep. That concept, jurisdiction, what that means. And I know we can get off on a million rabbit trails on both of those concepts, but on jurisdiction, keep it simple. Like look for their corporate filings, right? Look at their, that's why I go to the Dun & Bradstreet report because I'm saying, or the profile, because I'm saying, look, whether you are or not is not a problem for me. What is a problem is I don't know which one you are, right? That's the jurisdictional argument. I, I don't go in with constitutional jurisdiction, all that stuff yet until you have shown me or proven to me by your actions or certified whether you're one or the other. Are you constitutional? Are you functioning constitutionally or are you functioning corporately? Once I know which side of the fence you're on, we can do business all day long. Right. And, so, and, that, that, and that goes to the point of the fact we can't make any assumptions because then we're giving them the power of of doing something that we that we don't understand 
or that we mi misunderstand. We think right. they're one thing, we give them the benefit of the doubt instead of getting them to act actually spe specifically um, define it for us. Now, just on the whole, the whole membership thing and the whole society thing uh, and, and a structure, I've been helping people here with regards to all the mask mandates and people getting fired because they're not being vaxxed and stuff like that. So I went into the uh, union structure mm. and unions effectively are private societies. They, oh, have wow. their, they have their own organizational structure. They have their own rules, their own court of ethics. They even have an internal court system. I'm glad you brought that up and I'll expand on that in a minute. Go ahead. And so it was very interesting. And one of the things I liked about it is it is as above, so below, micro, macro, it's a smaller entity to understand the basic principles and processes that have to be in place without yes. looking at the entire world and the entire society or a big national or provincial government or city government. You look at a small thing like that and it becomes manageable in terms of uh, reading it and understanding it and going, this is the exact same structure. They just it make really it bigger and more complex. So it it's a good place for people to go and say, this is, this is not new what you're doing. This is some, using something, as you said at the beginning, that the system has built itself on because it's foundationally based. And yep. anything they can do means, or anything they have done means that we already had done it at law uh, and we have the power to do. They've taken what we can do and create and they've just multiplied it and complexified it and and left us out of the you know understanding part of it. <laughs> right, exactly. They forced us into their private society and made us believe that we have to be a part of that and there's no other option, but there is. Yeah. And you're you're exactly right, man, on the uh, the structure part of it. And, and and not giving us any knowledge or education about it. Like one of the big things well, that uh, the U.S. is they used to teach civics in school, which was an understanding of the political and civil nature and structure of, of society. But they stopped doing that. They don't want people to know. They want uneducated consumers out there in the world uh, acting in you know irresponsible, liable, non-liable ways and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, so yeah. So I just wanted to get that bit in about the organization because uh, it was very enlightening. Uh, you just you just have to go look at any union in the structure and their manuals it's all there and it's for the benefit of the members absolutely so, so the reason i was glad you brought that up is because when we were researching to set up our organization okay and we were researching churches and stuff some of the case law we came across was very very important it they say right in case law if a church organization has its own set of rules its own governance and its own court system, we cannot interfere. The only thing we could do is enforce an arbitration type judgment. So what does that say? If you're gonna build an organizational structure, make sure you have a form of governance, make sure your people know when they join, this is our form of governance, this is how we function, and make sure you have a court process within your organization that the member agrees to that they must go through before any other legal means are taken. Because if a member gets their panties in a bunch and decides to sue you for something and take you to court, now wait a minute, I'm bringing in the membership agreement that shows the court, no, they agreed, we have to go through, we have a, a complete system of arbitration or, or whatever you want to call it, right? And they agreed to go through that and they haven't. And the judge is going to say, bye, bring me back the decision. That's all I can do is enforce your decision. Yep. It's and about, about 15 years ago, I went to visit the archdiocese in Vancouver and made mm -hmm. inquiries about their legal process and actually had a meeting with the uh i don't remember what their title is but uh he was he was a priest at some level uh and he had um uh he was the the judge for their court and so we discussed their internal legal process and what they did and how they did it and the fact that basically it's the exact same as the public one except it happens within the body of the church and mm -hmm. uh private within the church 
And so he even gave me a couple of their decisions, which are written decisions, which look very similar to the public type of decisions. And in one of the decisions he gave me, it starts out basically thanking the two Catholic members for coming to the church to dispute, to settle their dispute, rather than going to the civil authorities. Right. right? And because any Catholic member could go to the civil if they want to, but technically they're supposed to do it within the church. Right. right. So, yeah, and that's one of the reasons why Catholic churches are totally outside the system and have never paid any reparations for in Canada with regards to the uh, residential schools and stuff. They were never mandated by by law. They could not be sued at law because they're not a person at law. They have no standing to be sued. So they made a voluntary payment because they could not be hound, hound, found liable by the civil court system. That's right. And that, I'm glad you said that they're unincorporated, which is what our model is. Our model is completely unincorporated. So right. we use a trust or we use a church, a UA, and maybe many UAs if we want to build more, which are unincorporated associations and uh, a trust. So and that's where we get into our model, which we do offer to our members. The thing we don't offer is handholding. Like we give you everything to set this structure up and learn to operate on your own. We do not have the capacity or, you know, um, uh, we, we just don't have the manpower to, to handhold people through these different things. But I think we've done a pretty damn good job with the videos, and everything we give to our members when they when they purchase or donate for the structure. So what we did was we formed the church, the church formed the UA, and the church in its formation document says, now, wait a minute. Yes, we're a corporation sold, but we don't want to vest that in one man. We've seen that that just simply makes someone a king, and we don't want to do that. So all the property and the corporate soul and the business of the church and the UA and all, all goes into the trust. The trust functions, it handles all the fiscal stuff, handles all the worldly money stuff, business. The church is natural. It's of nature. It's the people involved. The UA is of nature. It's the people assembled. It's them involved. There's no money going. I mean, it can go through there, but the trust deals with it all. So what we did was we set up this structure, right, which is complex and complexity is protection, right? Look at how these guys are so complex. Same type of thing. We have three different entities that are all unincorporated. And they function unincorporated, which, okay, you can have an unincorporated entity, but if you're functioning like a corporated one, they're going to hold you liable as one. So how you operate is very important. So we set up our church with our governance structure and how it's all, you know, going to play out and that the fact that we can write bylaws, then we wrote a constitution, which is our bylaws. So we have a church affidavit that forms the church, and then we have a set of bylaws that is the church governance. Okay, then we form the UA, and again, these have dispute resolution uh, type um, setups involved, and then we have the trust, and that's how we operate, okay? And no one gets to see the trust or anything except the people in the governance system of the, of the organizations, and there's checks and balances in there. I mean, we, we built all this in. It took us months to build it, even though it's not very long. Like, the trust is the most complex part of our, our three-tiered uh, model here. And the um, UA in the church is not so complex until that grows and gets built out, of course, just like the government, right? Then it'll get more complex because you're dealing with more members. People have needs. You got things that you're providing, that type of thing. But having it all in trust makes it really, really important or really, really powerful and safe because one of the things I realized was, wait a minute, that's how these guys are doing it. The government starts out as a trust and creates corporations out of the trust. Right. But first it's a trust and then they create corporations. And I, so we basically built the same model. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. So we let them have theirs because it ain't broke. So they're not fixing it. We're going to have ours. No, no problem. We're just two separate organizations, uh, societies running side by side. And in it's separate get jurisdictions. What's that? In separate jurisdictions. Except for jurisdictions. Right. And, and it's going to grow into a much bigger thing, which is why I'm so thankful for that experience I had in Divine Province in 2012 and 13, because I saw things that I can never unsee. And I was like, oh, yeah, this makes sense to me. This is but I never you know, I, I never knew how I was going to do it or if I was going to do it. And it just so happens that, you know, I've been led down this road very naturally to 
find myself back eight years ago with 10 times more knowledge, you know, eight, nine years ago. And I'm saying, oh, now I have a lot more knowledge as to how I would set this up and protect it and make sure it can last hundreds of years if it wants to. Maybe it only lasts a few. I don't know, but it's built to last, you know, so it's been and, pretty cool. Uh, and there are trusts that have been in, in existence and are still operating today uh, for hundreds of years. Uh, oh, so, yeah. yeah, so it, it's a very, very well recognized uh, process. Now, question is, you, you, if you're a member of a church, like, quote unquote, a regular type of church, you know, there's services from the church and there may be some type like like what type of services other than the training, the paperwork, what type of quote unquote benefits is there for for becoming a member of the House of Marcus Fellowship? Is there any outreach of any type or, uh, you know, if we're talking about jurisdictional stuff, um, like for instance, there used to be, if you went into a church, um, it was a safe haven uh, type of concept mm -hmm. that the civil did not come into the church to take somebody. Um, is, is there anything associated either now or potentially in the future with this type of structure or your structure in particular? 100%. So the church, remember we, what we did was we said, we don't have members, we have congregants. And we didn't set the church up according to the Catholic model, which is who taught everybody Christianity so that no one knew what it was really all about, right? So we set our church up, we have congregants. They come and they go. They're welcome at any time. They're welcome in our house. You know, we have sermons, even though we discontinued them for the time being because we just got too busy. But yes, we're building that out. You can come to us. I mean, you know, you come to the church, if you will, or the, the um, Unity of Divine Creation. We have a community forum there, you know, reach out to us, you know, ask us things. We'll talk to you. We'll do the best we can. House of Marcus is an integrated auxiliary. And what that is, is a separate organization that is supported by the church, right? So the trust supports the auxiliary. Now in the auxiliary that we do have members of, and yes, it's more private. And we have a ton of stuff that we offer in there, right? Because right now, we see that is where most of the functioning is going to happen, and we will build out the church even further uh, as we go as well. So right now, there's not a whole lot going on at the church, but you know we do. It does function. There is a community forum there that's open to anybody. Um, it's an open website. There's no quote unquote membership. It does have a members thing that we originally started, but we're probably going to wind up taking that down because everybody can come in and be a congregant. So that's how yeah, we're we, functioning right now. And yes, we do plan on building that out where the jurisdiction will be a safe haven, but that's going to take time. I mean, we've got, you know, probably a few years before we get to that, or maybe who knows? I mean, maybe it's another year or two, but it's not going to be tomorrow. Let's put it that way, but we're getting there. Well, we need to come up with a new word for membership, right? <laughs> right. So, so here we have members, but in the church, we have congregants. So yeah. Yeah, it's the so congregation. Huh? It's the congregation. And remember, we built everything strictly off the Bible, meaning the church doesn't have a building. That's not a church, right? There's no, you know, the church is where three or more are gathered. I mean, that's where it yeah. is, right? So we we didn't go with the Christian dogma. We took Christianity for what we see in its purity and apply it. And we like using Christianity because that's what they recognize, right? You go in there saying, oh, you know, I'm, you know, spiritual ascended guy, whatever, and I've got this new age thing. Okay, yeah, great. You don't look like a church to us, right? So we built ours out saying, no, we, we uh, yes, we believe in all that, but we also apply the Christian principles first and foremost, you know, and yeah. we do use the Bible. So that's why yeah. we. And they definitely but, respond to that. I know that for sure. Um, oh, yeah. Another question similar to one before, what about people that immigrated to Canada or USA and became citizens? It doesn't really matter where uh, where you are or what your status is. Uh, mm -hmm. You use this process, right? It doesn't make any difference. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, you know, again, in terms of our process where we're like dealing with straw man and changing status and everything, again, the, the documents are, are not going to be 
fitted for your country because we have a lot of citations to American and you know United States laws. So that would have to be something that gets built out. But yes, what we're trying to do honestly is establish this thing and make it really solid so that it is recognized and then we can branch out and say no you know what they're in another part of the world it doesn't matter we're we're an ecclesiastic society if you will we're a christian society they're part of us it doesn't matter what you think their status is they've done their born again after david and man they are saying hey i'm in the spirit i can't be part of this and what we hope to do is have a much larger trust model where our people can say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to grant you limited power of attorney to handle my straw man affairs for me or whatever the case may be, because we know that people can't really speak this stuff so well. While it may be in their heart, I mean, come on, that can't be the way. It can't be the way that everybody has to become a master lawyer to figure this stuff out, right? So for me, it's like, okay, well, we need to build a model and that's why it's taken us all this time because we need to build that model where we can stay like, like, look, you can go to your Catholic priest and he can step in and speak for you. And I don't think anybody in the government's going to question that. Right. Same type of thing. Hey, I'm speaking for them. You know, they're in our society. They're, they're a man or a woman of God speaking for them. So that's where we plan on getting to so that other countries can be involved in a much easier way than doing all this I feel like there's a certain number of us that are doing all this straw man stuff and declaration status and all that, that because we're setting that foundation and we're, and we're going to, and we have a plan as to how we're getting recognized for that. That's the thing, right? You know, as well as I do that everybody's always looking for like some sort of government recognition, which no, I don't need their authority, but it would be nice if they say, you know what? Yes, we recognize you. Great. Thank you. Now, bring the people in. And we have a plan for that, which again, I don't want to sell the farm out in the open public, but we're getting there. So that's where we're headed. Yeah, it, it is a big step to um, have the system recognize within its own paperwork processes that you're no longer under their jurisdiction. That right. is, you know, big thing. And, that, and that's why I feel like God brought me Jude, okay? A 25-year litigating attorney that's a bulldog who his heart is in the right place and he's and he's he's with us 100%. He's not afraid of losing his bar card. He doesn't give a shit. And he will go right back at them if they try to threaten him with that. He's, he does not put up with that stuff. He's not scared of any judge. He's not, you know, kissing any judge's ass. No, never has, never will. It's not in his soul. And I'm thinking, damn, man, God couldn't have brought me a better guy to have to be able to plot this course with because he's a master at the other side. He's a master at process and procedure. And now he's starting to master what I'm teaching him about the private law and blending it together, which has just been phenomenal, you know. So great. Yeah. Blessed for that, man. Blessed okay. for that. We're we're just uh, I set this for 90 minutes. We're five minutes away from it. We could probably go a little bit longer, but is there anything you want to say to kind of wrap things up here? Um, I would just say for those of you that are new to this stuff, you know, don't get lost in being overwhelmed. It's normal when you wake up to be overwhelmed. I've noticed a process through my own awakening that I'm now seeing thousands of people go through. It's the fear and overwhelmed and where do I start process, right? Like you're gonna go through that, but guess what? You woke up. So it's not gonna be long before you get to where you start feeling your power and really feeling where you're going and being comfortable with that. So stay out of fear. Don't beat yourself up for being overwhelmed and not knowing what's going on. There are people like JD, myself, and many other teachers out there that are helping people get to where they need to go. Your soul is already guiding you. These people will help you by who you resonate with the most. That's your path. And that's really it, man. One of the big things that I've noticed is the permission mentality. You know, the, the the fear, the underlying fear is always always being trained to seek permission. Yes. And we have to recognize that we can give ourselves permission. We don't need to ask any authority for permission. And that's a huge emotional and intellectual shift for people to take on their own self-authority. And uh, so that's all part of the process. 
and having totally. people who've gone down that road and can help you build that and it comes down to taking action you can't just study this stuff you actually have to go out and take some action you have to exercise your self-authority in various ways but not do it before you have a good handle on uh what you're doing and why you're doing it so you have a little bit of confidence at least and uh, aren't going to be crushed if it doesn't work out 100 <laughs> percent <laughs> exactly i've it seen looked- Jim- People just study and they never apply and I've seen yeah. too many people rush out to apply and have a bad experience and it causes them problems so it's a balance of studying and application and there's very very simple things you can do to apply it to test that I have the authority and that fear and to and to take little steps to overcome it without taking the big ones so I, you know, I encourage everybody to look at those little things you can do to uh, stretch yourself in uh, simple ways. Like for instance, I've been teaching for over 20 years. Go to your bank and tell them to take your social insurance number off your bank account. Mm-hmm. And you can do the same thing in the U.S. It doesn't have to be there. Okay, social security number. And and the number of people who actually go and do that is relatively small, considering how many people have been told they can do it. And here's the proof you can do it. Yet they hesitate to go and talk to a teller. And say take my social insurance number off and that's that's a simple way to apply something and and check out your level of fear and hesitation and doubt about it and and why are you afraid to talk to a teller at a bank to tell them to take social insurance number off but it's one of those small action steps so there's lots of little things like that that can in that sense don't don't be disillusioned that they're going to easily work with you because you're dealing with ignorance so in other words if you fail at the first attempt that's okay you just have to push it a little further go a little further maybe you have to send a notice to one of their corporate people you know it's okay in other words if it doesn't work the first time for you or if it doesn't go through i mean this is part of the process but JD's right. I mean, you start with that stuff and you stand in your power and be polite and be business about it and know that these people are ignorant because you're going to have to work with that, you know. Yeah. So and they've been poorly trained or they've been trained in, in a way that they have no idea what they're doing. This is just the policy. Well, the policy yeah. doesn't matter when it infringes your rights. That's why we need to know what our rights are and require yeah. them to. Yeah, absolutely. They're ultra buyers, meaning, you know, outside their authority, if they're treading on your rights, it doesn't matter what the policy is. That's exactly it. That's a great point. Great point, man. Well, that's, uh, that's awesome. Thank you very much for spending the time with us and uh, for going over it. The replay will be available for anybody who wants it, because I know there was so much information <laughs> in, in this hour. <laughs> yeah, and that's what Robert Michael does, man. There's a, <laughs> JD, you're not the only one. Every time I speak, people are like, oh my God, man, that's so much information. I'm like, God just tells me, dump it out. I just dump it out. <laughs> And, and, and just and just so you, just so you know, there there will also be a transcript with it, so people can actually uh, see the words, um, awesome. uh, rather than just uh, just listening to it again. But it, you know, it really comes through. I mean, like I said, we we started a long time to go together, and I've seen you move through different things in different stages, and you you certainly have. Um, paid your dues and and learned the information and studied it to a depth that most people don't go to. The number one thing I do when I look at other people's work is I double check it. And I mm-hmm. take a look at what they're saying and, and are they using it correctly? Have they got the the little things lining up that should be lining up? And if they make a claim, I go check out the claim if they mm-hmm. haven't provided the evidence of it, right? And uh, you know, I don't have to do that with you anymore. I can see it in the way everything's done and the way you speak. And I, I know the I know the research that you do. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I have real confidence in you and you certainly come across that way. So I, I appreciate you, Robert. Thank you, brother. Same here, man. For those of you that are just starting uh, with J.D., 